Okay, A2P10 DLC, what does it mean? Why is it important? And how do you integrate it into your high level account, sub accounts, workflows with onboarding? We're gonna cover all of that in this video. So A2P stands for application to person and 10 DLC stands for 10 digit long code, which is a phone number compliance. Basically, these are rules being enacted both by the US government and carriers such as AT&T, T-Mobile, et cetera, to reduce the number of spam messages that are actually received by consumers and to increase the deliverability of businesses who take marketing through text seriously. So there's really two considerations. If you follow me, you know that sometimes I recommend cold texting as a strategy for getting clients. It's very effective. People answer. The open rate is super high. However, that exact thing is getting cracked down on through these rules. So I'm going to explain workarounds and considerations when it comes to cold texting in this video, as well as how to manage manage it for your clients, which is going to be very important if they're sending SMS through high level. So first of all, let's go through the four options we have through sending SMS messages through high level. The first one is to register the business, whether that be your business or your client's business as a low volume mixed use case business. This costs about $20 to set up and it's going to be anywhere from two to $12 per month to maintain your status with the carriers. The second option is to register as a sole proprietorship with a sole proprietorship use case. This one costs $20 to set up, but there's no ongoing fees. The third one is to register a toll free number. So this is a number with an 844 or an 833 at the beginning, and it's not a local area code. So the rules that apply to local area code numbers don't apply to toll free numbers, although they have hinted that eventually the regulation is going to go towards them as well. And then the fourth option is to connect your personal SIM card and send messages through there. This actually frees you from being billed per text and instead you're billed a flat amount per month. We'll talk about this option a little bit later on. So I'm going to make this really quick and easy for you. So when it comes to sending cold unsolicited text messages through any of these, the best way to do it is going to be through toll free and potentially connecting a SIM card right now. Now this isn't legal advice. I'm not condoning that you do this. I'm just saying that some people do and they get results with it. Most of the lawsuits in this case haven't been in a B2B setting. It's been from a B2P setting where a business is messaging another person like Papa John's Pizza is messaging all of the consumers on their list. They got in trouble for doing something like this, but when you're texting another business, the rules tend to be a little bit more lenient. Another option is to use a company like Unistack. Now these guys are built for the real estate space, but because they're built for the real estate space, they have all of this stuff down pat. They've been doing cold texting for years and they actually take care of the A2P10 DLC for you so you don't have to worry about it and they'll replace your number if it gets burned and the reputation gets damaged. Now I haven't personally used Unistack. I'm about to test it so maybe I'll come out with an update video in the future about that. However, it is worth looking into if you're trying to implement the cold texting strategy. Now if you're trying to register a legit number that's for legit marketing purposes like texting leads back or sending out promos or getting people lost passwords or things like that, then you can actually register with any of these methods. Methods. Now they all have pros and cons, which I'll list out here now. So with option one, our low volume mixed use case, this is probably going to get you the best deliverability. You'll be able to send the most messages and you'll have the highest trust with carriers as long as you follow the rules. The drawback here though, is that if you do something wrong, it will permanently affect the reputation of your business because this is tied to your business registration number, your EIN in the United States or your client's EIN if you've registered on behalf of them. So you really got to be sure that you're following on the rules and you don't get your reputation damaged. Now, the other option is doing a sole proprietorship use case. Now, this one's okay. If you have an EIN, you really shouldn't do the sole prop use case because they're likely going to associate what you're doing with your business anyway. And then they'll just slowly bring down the number of texts that you're able to send, the ones that are getting delivered, etc. So don't think you can circumvent that drawback of having your business's reputation permanently affected by registering a sole prop and then just burning those numbers. It's not going to work. The only case in which you should use sole prop registration is if you actually don't have an EIN for your business, then you're welcome to do that. However, as soon as you do register an EIN, you should switch to the mixed use case campaign. And the drawbacks when it comes to sole props is that you're probably going to have less volume possible overall, and you're going to have less deliverability because your trust won't be quite as high with the carriers. Next up, we've got toll free numbers. Now, this is a very attractive alternative for the time being to going through what can sometimes be a lengthy registration 
registration and confirmation process in the low volume mixed use case. So for me, when I'm bringing on brand new clients, I'm likely going to register a toll free number first, which by the way, is the same process as registering a local number in high level. You just put 844 or 833 in front of the number, and then you can use that with pretty low volume without having to do any registration. Now you can actually get toll free numbers registered so you can ramp up that volume a little bit, and they seem to be a little bit more lenient than these other ones. However, if you're going to go through the registration process, you may as well just go with the low volume mixed use case campaign. And then lastly, when it comes to connecting your SIM card to be able to send messages through that, I haven't tested this company, but I want to provide you guys with all the resources possible. It's here on the screen. It'll also be in the link in the description below. Click there and go check it out. Again, not sponsored or condoned by me, but it seems like a viable option and many people have spoken highly of them. All right. So now that you're clear on all the options, I'm going to show you how to register each one so that you can get the best deliverability for yourself and for your clients. All right. So here we are inside of a demo account and I'm going to show you how to actually submit the registration so that it gets approved. So let's first go to settings and then business profile. You're going to need to fill out absolutely everything in here correctly, including your EIN number here and your authorized representative number here. Once you've done that, go ahead and come to phone numbers and then trust center. This is for the sole prop or the mixed use case campaign for toll free number registration. It's going to be here pretty much the same process. I'm not going to go over it in this video. Self-explanatory, similar answers to what we're going to do for the mixed use case and the sole prop registration. So first of all, I'll come here to business profile and click submit for review and you'll see your profile has been successfully submitted. And then I'll go ahead and click start A2P registration. Or if you've already done this, you can just click here. Now it's going to ask me if I have an EIN or if I don't have an EIN. If I click, I do have an EIN, then it's going to let me know, look, you get a $4 one-time fee and a $16 one-time fee. And there's an additional campaign fee up to $12 per month that will apply in accordance with TCR rules. If I do sole prop, then it's going to give me the same information. After these screens, everything is pretty much exactly the same. We're gonna have to fill out some information. It's going to ask me my business address, and then it's gonna ask me for some more details here. I'm gonna do this with the EIN number instead of the sole prop registration, because there's more people that are going to need it for that side of things. But don't overthink this part of the form. I'll show you the ones that you need to think harder about in just a second. So I'll click start registration again, go through EIN, click next, and I'm going to get this, what we talked about before, low volume mixed, recommended one point seven dollars a month you could select one of these but likely you have a mixed use case so this is going to be perfect for you so in the campaign use case description you can see our example says this campaign sends appointment information and confirmation messages to a customer it's important that you actually describe what you're going to be doing because it's a real person that's going to check and verify whether or not you get approved so in this case for my business i send both appointment confirmation reminders but i also send promotional text so i'm going to type something out and then i'll show you afterwards okay Okay, so this is what I've written. This campaign sends appointment confirmations and reminders to those who have scheduled and promotional texts and reminders to interested parties. This is pretty standard. Just write out what it is that you're actually going to use the texting for. Go ahead and click next. Next up, it's gonna ask us for two sample messages. It says this must include your business name and it must include an opt-out keyword. Now this is generally across the board, the rules you need to include sender information, which is your business name, and you need to include opt-out information on the first message you send to anybody. It's certainly not going to hurt to include the opt-out message on both of these. Now it's important that in these sample messages, you're putting what you're actually going to be sending and that it matches the previous step. So I'll type these out and show you what I've done. All right, so these are my two messages. The first one is, hi, this is Keaton from Keaton Walker LLC. I know that sounds weird, but they want to see the actual business name in there. In practice, I'll probably take off the LLC here. Your consultation is coming up at date time. Looking forward to helping you with your marketing needs. So again, I mentioned this was one of the use cases, so I'm putting it in my sample message. The next one says, hi, Jennifer, we just launched a new program to help you get better results with your website and online ads. Reply why, and I'll send you the link. Keaton Walker LLC, reply stopped unsubscribe. So you can see I'm compliant. I'm following what I said I was going to be doing with this campaign. So these should all be green flags for the person reviewing this campaign. It doesn't hurt to click the message will include an embedded link and the messages will include phone numbers because you want these to actually get delivered when you send them. Go ahead and click next. And then on the last page, it's going to ask us about end user consent. And this is the trickiest part. 
part. It says, how do end users consent to receive messages? It's asking us for our opt-in keywords and then also our opt-in message. So you can see the example here. End users can opt in by visiting www.website.com and adding their phone number. They can check a box agreeing to receive text messages from example brand. Additionally, end users can also opt in by texting start to this number to opt in. Next up, we've got opt-in keywords. This is pretty basic. You're not going to have to put much in here. And then opt-in message. Example, you're successfully opted in for a message from Lead Connector LLC. Your visa reply stopped on subscribe. So those two were easy to fill out. You saw what I put there. Now, why is this one important or tricky? Because they're actually going to go check. So if you say that you have a box that people check, but you don't actually have a box, they're not going to approve it. The likelihood is that it's not actually going to get approved. So if you say that you have this box, then you should actually have it. And this is what it would end up looking like. So they'd fill out first name, last name, phone, email. Then you'd actually have this checkbox. I agree to receive SMS or emails for the provided number or email above. And then they would click yes and submit. And you should have this somewhere visible on your website. People can actually opt in by texting start to this number. Then you should actually have that set up because they may test it. Who knows? So I'll go ahead and write this out and show you what I put. And there you go. End users can opt in by visiting itskeen.com forward slash contact us and submitting their phone number in the form. Then they check a box to consent receiving messages from Keen Walker LLC. Now you may be wondering, what if I generate leads through Facebook or Google or something else? To be honest, I don't know what to tell you. Part of me says, just send them this website one and don't worry about it. Part of me says, mention that you generate leads on other platforms, but you always have a checkbox to confirm this consent. And it's important you do have that checkbox or else you won't get approved and technically you're non-compliant. And if you're wondering, a statement that says, by submitting, you consent to receive messages is going to be seen as less than a checkbox where people actually have to check it to move forward. All right, so once you're done filling all of this out, you click submit. And right now it's taking up to four to six weeks to get approved. Some tips when it comes to getting approved, make sure that your business profile matches perfectly the information on the document you got from the IRS getting your EIN. So the spelling should be the same. The phone number should be the exact same. They should all be spelled the same. And there's some evidence to support that if it is exactly the same, you get approved in a week or two instead of having to wait for manual review by a human. So that's it for the setup process. Thanks so much for tuning in. Best of luck. I hope you get approved. Leave any questions you have in the comments below and check out this video next if you have more questions about high level.